Hey guys, thanks for being back for session three in our series Elevate. Uh, as always, we hope that you're having an incredible time in your group and know that uh, God is working there and so grateful that you've chosen to be part of a group. Uh, I've got Chad and Deborah with me uh, in our session three of Elevate. I'm so grateful that they're here and excited to have this conversation today. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 12, and uh, I want to jump right in it in this session and ask Deborah if she'll lead, read chapter 12, verse uh, 13 through 21 in the Gospel of Luke. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kind of greed. Life does not consist in abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded at abundance harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I would do. I would tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there... I will store up my surplus grain, and I will say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, drink, eat, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demand from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but it's not rich towards God. Awesome. Thanks for reading that, Deborah. Uh, one of the things that jumps out to me in these verses is verse 15 in this parable uh, where Jesus is talking. He says, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Man's life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. Uh, this idea of life does not consist in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an abundance of possessions. What do you guys think he's talking about there when he says uh, life does not consist? Chad, what is it that this challenge that Jesus is giving us here? You know, you know I, think, I think what God is, what Jesus is saying there is that, you know, life is not all about what you own. Um, it's, more, it's more about uh, what you do with what God has given you. It's, mm -hmm. it's about... Um, your attitudes, you know, again, Scripture says that man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. And, you know, I'm reading, I'm reading this story and I'm seeing it and I'm thinking, you know, even as I'm sitting here reading it now, I'm thinking, you know, he had all this extra. He could have done so much good with that. He could have helped feed the poor and, and give to those who were, who were needy. And instead he said, no, nah, I'm going to hang on to it and, 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 and keep mm -hmm. it for myself mm -hmm. instead of asking what is it that God wants me to do. And so I think uh, an, an abundant life that God wants us to have is a, is a generous life where we always ask first and foremost, what does God want me to do with what I have? Yeah, it's so interesting because Jesus in verse 15 makes this really strong mm -hmm. statement, watch out, mm -hmm. exclamation point, yeah. I mean, watch out. Right. And That's so right. I think it's this challenge for all of us to watch out, to be really aware. And he says, be on your guard against all kinds of greeds, uh, uh, all kinds of greed. I think, I think if we're honest, you know, every one of us have struggled with greed. It so easily uh, slips into our life, what we call the pos uh, possession obsession, you know. Mm -hmm. We become obsessed with stuff. We become obsessed with these things. And in this parable, this guy becomes so possessed with his, uh, obsessed with his possessions, with his stuff, that he starts tearing down Completely good barns. They're just not big enough so that he can store up more of his stuff, so that he can hoard it, so that he can hold on to it, so that he can protect it. And it, it's such a challenging thing because at the end it says that a person who's like this and stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God, I mean, that, that's a fool. Right. Right. Uh, and, and I think uh, we all are in this life living in this tension because we can look at this story and go, well, this guy had a ton of stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think if we look at our lives, especially here in America, and then we compare that to the world, mm -hmm. we're all sitting here kind of like this guy right. mm -hmm. with all of our stuff in our storage units, you know, it, it, which are like our barns and we're storing it up and 
You know, I'm not against the storage unit uh, business, okay? I'm, I'm completely okay with it. People <laughs> use them for good things. But my point is, we, we in essence, sometimes do the same thing. Um, what do you guys think, uh, maybe, Deborah? What, what's the danger with possessions? Why, what's the danger in times when we can just have too much? Well, you said it really best. And even with, with Jesus, he knew that the, the guy heart was coming from greed when you read it from the beginning, right? So right there, he used this parable as an example to teach about greed. So mm -hmm. what I think what Jesus was trying to let us understand that it's, it's, it's not about having the stuff for yourself because it's okay to have stuff. Mm -hmm. But to the point of what you are doing is thinking about just you alone and not everybody and people are, are around you, especially when you know you have it. But because of your own security for your own self, you tend to hold on to the things you have because you are thinking about tomorrow or later day, but you do not know when your life will be taken away. Yeah. So it's always good to, you know, to, to help out. And, um, one verse that comes in mind is um, Malachi 3.10. This is kind of talked about, it, it talks about that if, if we sow to his kingdom, you know, he said, test me and see on that. I will bless you, mm -hmm. not uh, in, in abundance, not just in possession, but also that he will bring souls to his church. Mm -hmm. And that's, that is one verse that I always stand on when I'm, I'm sowing seed to the church mm. because that's that's the only way we can be able to bring you know souls to the kingdom of God yeah. because we yeah. reap eternal life inheritance. Yeah, it, it's almost like the idea, and I, I love that you said that. That's so true, so challenging. It's almost like this idea that will we really invest and invite if we don't invest with our resources? Mm. Because it, it truly, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're investing with your resources. That shows I'm, I'm, I'm committed to the work of the Lord at this place, whether it's Vaughn Forest or some other church that a person's a part of. And, and then we go, you know what? I need to invest in the people that God's put in my sphere of influence where I live, work, and play. And I need to invite them into what God's doing because I'm invested into that. Mm -hmm. And you're right. When we invest in, in what we have, it, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chad, I want to ask you this question. Deborah mentioned something. She said uh, that, there's nothing wrong with having possessions. Mm -hmm. and, and I would agree with that. I mean, some of the people that God uses in the greatest ways in the Old Testament are unbelievably wealthy. Right, right. Some are poor, some are right. rich. So God uses all people. But so often in, 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 in different cultures and in our culture, one group would demonize people who have, another group would demonize those who don't have. Right. Share with us, you know, why, why do you think that that happens? What's the slippery slope there? You know, again, I think, I think it all boils down to a heart issue. I think, you know, um, God certainly blesses some people with more, and there's other folks, you know, that, that struggle. And I think for those, sometimes for those that have a lot, uh, their possessions can become their God. Uh, for those that don't have uh, as much or, or, you know, are poor, uh, sometimes wanting uh, to have more can become their God. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and even those of us right in the middle, uh, you know, here in America or wherever it is, you know, sometimes complacency and, or just, you know, being where we are can become our God. I think, I think it all comes down to it's a heart issue and it's a trust issue. Mm -hmm. You know, you read, you read the story and, you know, this guy already had barns. He already had, you know, plenty, but he said, no, nah, I, 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 it seemed like, almost seemed like he was nervous. He wanted to tear that down and build a big one so that he could have safety and security. It was a trust mm -hmm. issue. And, you know, and back to Deborah's point about, bringing folks into the church, the question is, are we going to trust God with what we have? Are we going to trust God with our church, with our lives, uh, with everything that we are, uh, and say, God, it's all yours. It's all yours anyway, because we know it's all God's anyway. Mm -hmm. Are we going to say, God, we trust you with that, and our heart's going to be the hearts that God is looking for, uh, for those to change the world and reach those who are far from God you know, with the gospel of Jesus? Mm. Yeah. One of the things that jumps out at me in this parable is this guy obviously has his security in his stuff. Right? That's right. And he's building his barns, making them bigger, protect my stuff, protect my stuff. And it kind of raised this question of examination in my own life is, is my, um, is my focus, is my uh, dedication 
uh, toward the stuff I have or the giver of stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, and, and this guy obviously was struggling with that, and that's why at the end of the verses, I mean, the Scripture's clear. It says, this is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself but is not rich toward God. Uh, I mean, it, it calls him a fool. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, those are strong words mm-hmm. from God because this guy has found this place of complacency and his God, ha- his, his God has, is the stuff that he has. The stuff mm-hmm. that he has has become his God is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think that's, you know, the tendency and temptation for all of us. And, and I loved what you said too, Chad, is sometimes those who don't have, you know, growing up, I didn't have a lot. I mean, we barely got by. We barely made it, right? And I can remember even at times wanting, and, and I've seen that in my own life and in the lives of others, that when you don't have, you can be just as bad mm. to fall into this trap as the one who has tons because your God can become the yep. pursuit of stuff right. That's right. that you don't have. Right. Where on the flip side, someone who has plenty their God can become protecting what they have. Right. That's right. That's right. Where God yeah. calls us to live lives with open hands, right. you know, to trust him, to know that he's in, in, in control of, of everything. Right, right. And, and you know, the Bible never says that, that money is evil. It says mm-hmm. the love of money is evil, and that's Correct. a two-sided coin. It could be the love of the money that you have, love of the money that you don't have. Mm. And so really it's important just to remember that our trust and our love and our hope and every bit of what we have should be focused on God, and, and we should be generous. You know, my... Uh, when my kids give me a gift for Father's Day or my birthday, like, I mean, obviously they didn't go out and earn the money. They're seven and four. You know, it's not about that, but mm-hmm. it's about their hearts. Mm-hmm. It's about them wanting to be generous with me and show how much they love me. And so I think for us, you know, God doesn't need our money. God doesn't need anything from us. But when we're generous towards others and generous towards God, um, then that shows God what our hearts are and how much we love him. Yeah, where your treasure is, there your heart will, right. will be. Right, exactly. You know, for, for someone who's from Africa that didn't have much, it's uh, what you just said, actually, it's like a slippy slope for me personally. Um, like when you don't have much, whatever you make, you want to hold on to it because you are afraid you are going to lose it. Mm. You know, so it took me a while to let go of that control and trust God mm. with the little that I have. Like three weeks ago, somebody, when you trust God with the little, he's going to be faithful in the big things. So mm. it's something that I struggle with growing up, even when we moved to America. Even if you have more, it still doesn't matter mm. because you feel like you are going to lose it. Yeah. Mm. Funny story. I'm that way with eating. So I eat really fast. <laughs> And my parents said, we, we, it was all brothers, mm-hmm. and man, I was afraid they were going to get my food, so I would eat it as fast <laughs> as I could. And now I've developed this terrible habit of eating really fast. But I think that is, is I can imagine, I mean, uh, obviously Chad and I don't fully understand, you know, your story because we didn't live it, but that temptation of, oh my gosh, I, I have mm-hmm. right. so many things that I never dreamed I would have coming mm-hmm. from Africa. And it would be easy to hold on to yes. that, you know, in, in this almost protective kind of way. Mm-hmm. And that's cool that God has worked in your life to continue to uh, challenge you to live with open hands and just to live generously. Well, I, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed our discussion. Our hope for you is that you'll take this discussion in our small circle and content- continue it in your bigger circle as you guys talk about what it means to live lives of generosity and what it means to live a life of trust. Because honestly, that's really all it's about. This whole series is about us trusting God more. Thank you guys for being part of a group. I hope you have an incredible time.